had done the research um, on the, the different row spacings um, and uh, seen the data. And so then we went right to working on the corn head and, mm -hmm. and my, uh, my heated shop. And so then we made a couple more design changes. And, you know, we, of course, we had to build, you know, you couldn't buy any parts. We had to build everything with a, with a torch and a hand grinder and a welder. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so we kind of had a design that we thought would work. And, and then um, a friend of mine told me that uh, what I had done was, was patentable. And he said, you need to shut your mouth and get to a patent attorney. And so my, my first patent attorney, again, this is all of these things almost were like somebody had laid them out ahead of me and all I had to do was execute. Was that experience what led you to working with the, the major line OEMs at that point? Yep. The, uh, the, the very next call, um, as soon as we had filed the patent, um, I had contacts at both Deer and Case, and both, both great organizations and the individuals that I met at both companies were fantastic guys. And I showed them what we had done. We had some field days for them, and they were, they were both interested in sitting down and having some conversations. And... Um, but at that point in time, we, we decided to visit with the, the case people. And I, I born and raised with Red Machinery. And um, so we visited with them and we, we started there and I um, think things were okay. Um, but the, you know, the innovation and where I was at was, was quite a ways ahead of what they were looking at. And just never, the, you know, the marketing people, they, they thought, I've got the next great toy. Narrow row corn is going to be the next step in, in agriculture. The marketing people were really excited about it. And, uh, but on the corn head side, we couldn't just, we couldn't pull it all together quick enough. And so then I moved on and, and uh, worked with the John Deere people. Yeah, but you know, the, I, I learned a lot. And I, th I think those both at Deere and Case, they, they learned quite a bit. The younger engineers learned quite a bit from me while I was there. And a little bit about the manufacturing a little bit about the economics, a little bit about a business plan. And I, and I, I turned to one of the guys, I said, business plan? I said, what's that? And he goes, well, that's a plan that shows we're going to make some money when we, when we build this. And I'm like, well, that's, that's a good idea. I never thought about that. You know, and it, it's the farmer mentality and the business mentality. And um, so I had heard some of that and, and knew, you know, how to, how to be able to come up with the, the markup you know, and, and learn about cost of manufacture and, and you know, hardening. And, and there's a, there was a lot of education. It went, went both ways. And uh, so then in the early 2000 era, then I was, I was virtually um, had decided that I'm, I'm going to need to go it alone. And uh, if we're going to make this thing fly, I, I got to do it myself. And I had met John Kinzenbaugh and visited with him at, at one of your no-till conferences. And we, we had given him an award for an innovator as well. So he was all excited and gave me some of his wisdom, you know, during his learning curve of, of going from, you know, re, re, uh, re horsepowering up John Deere tractors to, to building planter frames and to, to where the company is today. And John, he just turned to me at the meeting sitting in Des Moines. He just turned to me. I was, Frank was at the table with us and John just turned to me. He says, "Mary, and he says, I'm, I'm here to tell you if you if, if you want this thing done and done right, he said you'll do it yourself." Grandpa used to say the same thing: "If you want it done right, do it yourself." And so that's we we started our own company. And, and but I never in my wildest dreams, never in my wildest dreams, did I expect to become a short line manufacturer of corn heads and corn head parts, let alone build the world's largest corn heads, the, the ones with the narrowest row spacings, and and invent the the world's first chopping stock roll. Hey, those, they, they just happen. And uh, I always tell everybody that necessity is the best mother of invention. And if you find a problem, you know, our job is to come up with solutions. And that, that's where we're at today. And I, I think we're gonna continue that on and um, looking, looking forward to the challenges as we move into the future. So we go back to that, the, the time where you, because you worked with both of those manufacturers, you were basically, you know, ink deals that were going to come along. They were going to carry this out to the market. Tell, yeah, tell us what, what that was like and, 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 you know, 
that you're dealing with battleships, really. Yeah. I and mean, majors would say yeah. the same thing, right? So was, tell us what that was like. It, it was kind of interesting. Um, you know, some of the people that I, I met at Case were that said, you know what, we're, we want to become the industry leader and we need innovation. We need new, new things. And we, we want you in our camp and we want you to help with us. But at the same time, we, you'd run into a few people that said, you know, and it, it's at both companies. I think it's with any major company. Yeah. And, and we'd run into a few individuals that said, you know, I've been here for 35 years. I know everything there is to know, and it's not going to work. And I turned to them and I said, you know what, with that attitude, you're exactly right. And um, I think Henry Ford stated it best, whether you think you can or think you can't, you're right. And um, so we kind of struggled, you know, and I'd wake up in certain mornings and I'm just anxiety and I'm just like, gosh, the program's just not going the way it's supposed to. And then other days I'd wake up and say, oh, gosh, I'm going to be a multimillionaire and <laughs> everything's wonderful. And then the next day it's like I'm going broke. So the emotional financial roller coaster thing uh, was phenomenal in those early years, just from one, one day to the next, or somebody say, oh, somebody's already done that, or, you know, what? it'll never work, you know. There's just a lot of people that don't want you to be successful because it's new, mm -hmm. and they're scared of, of new things, whether it's no-till or, or whether it's some different method of growing corn. So was it the, the, the frustration of dealing with bureaucracy and hordes of engineers who weren't, didn't, didn't you know, like you said, finding a reason not, right. not to do it. Was that... What led you to say, I'm ready to just make this alone. thing happen by myself? Yeah. I, I, you know, the patents only last for so long. And, and back then it was, uh, they lasted for 17 years from date of application. And I, I knew that the sand was going through the hourglass on my invention. And I, I had, you know, it was a passion that I, I believed that I was developing both mechanically and agronomically at the same time, uh, something that would be useful for agriculture, and, and namely the, the narrow row corn or the solid seeded corn. And I kept telling everybody, corn's a grass. And I said, it's just, just time we as farmers treat it like a grass and solid seed it. And so uh, we were just moving too slow. And then um, I spent two, three years with the John Deere people. And um, it, uh, it was kind of different there. The, the Cornhead people were more excited. They thought that we really had something great, but we were still struggling a little bit with trash intake uh, um, on, on that particular Cornhead that they had at that time. Uh, but the marketing people were on the other side of it. Well, we're promoting 20 inch rows and so on and so forth. So it was kind of kind of different. Case, marketing people loved me. Cornhead people were kind of lukewarm. And, and you've got to have both groups um, at, uh, at, at 10 on the interest level right. in order to make it fly. And so then at Deer, it was the other way around. The Cornhead people, they were at 10. And the marketing people were kind of lukewarm on the idea. So I, I just, and, and I kind of thought about what John had told me and his experiences. And I, I said, boy, I said, we're now into the early 2000 era. And I said, if I'm going to get this thing launched, I'm going to have to do How it. How many years in pet, into patent protection were you at at that point? Um, we were already five years in. And so the, the patents last for 17 years. So I, I knew that we, we had spent some time there and the, the sand was running through the hourglass. So again, kind of like how things line up. It, it, it sounds like, uh, to a degree, you were a reluctant manufacturer because it had these other ones worked out. You wouldn't be sitting in the chair today no. as CEO of Calmer Cornheads because no, it, it was uh, it, it was kind of a, I had to instead of I wanted to. Where that was different, you know, in farming it was I wanted to, but uh, the, the starting my own manufacturing company was I I just had to. And I can remember those first years, you know, sell five or $7,000 worth of parts. And I'm just like, wow, this is, this is pretty exciting. <laughs> I remember grandpa saying, you know, it's taken a long time to build the Calmer reputation. 
And he kind of looked at us four boys. And then dad looked at us and he said, yep, it's taken us a lifetime to build a reputation for the Calmer name. And he said, it's only going to take you a heartbeat to destroy it. And then he looks at me and he doesn't look at the other three boys. Oh, it'll take a heartbeat to destroy it, you know. And, and I was just getting, you know, into the high school years and, you know, doing a little race and street race and, you know, and stuff like that. I, it was kind of funny that mom and dad still laughed about it. But you know what? They, they were as excited as anybody was. And they would come over when we built that first cornhead. Mom and dad were there every day. And they, they would sit there and, and watch us. There was about three of us that were fabricating the parts. And then all of a sudden we'd come across and say, you know what, we, we need 100 bolts this size. And mom and dad would say, you know, we got something to do. And so we'd hand them the bolt and they'd take off and go down to Galesburg and have lunch at parties or something and pick up 100 bolts and come back to the shop. And so they were our, our gophers. And I, I can remember mom and dad, we, we put plastic paddles on the gathering chains and the, the early corn heads. And so that I said, here's your job. And so they were over in the corner of the shop, you know, and the corn was starting to dry down. And so mom and dad are over there and they're 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 part of the game, too. And, and uh, they were they were very proud. And I, I was proud to have them as, as part of my team. And my my other brother was there as, as well. And uh, it was a it was a joint effort and everybody believed that it would work, but we still, when we built that first 11 row that first summer, we did not know for sure that it would run. We had a pretty good idea that it would, but we still, there was still that margin of possibility that uh, <laughs> I had just grown 200 acres of 15 inch corn. <laughs> so I think from from the, the, the date of the maiden voyage uh, up until the the first person called in and bought a, a kit to retrofit uh, a corn head to 15 inch rows. It was about six years. And then we had to make the molds for the poly and, you know, those kind of things. The first, <laughs> the first corn head, of course, there, you know, there is no poly for 15 inch rows. And <laughs> so I'd done some measuring and had some old sewer pipe, you know, that we had dug up and, and I got to measure and I said, you know, that's about the right width. And so we, we used the PVC pipe, white PVC pipe, and uh, we cut it in half. And that, that was uh, our first uh, hoods that, that we used out there. And so the this farmer, I had to explain to him how to, how to go to the local plumbing store and, and buy some sewer pipe to, to build his divider snouts. And so those things were kind of fun. So the, the first year, I, I think we sold an upgrade kit and then um, we advertised and then the farm magazines, of course, were running some stories about it. And then the, uh, that, that first year, we, we built three 16-row, uh, 15-inch uh, corn heads. And luckily enough, I mean, one of them was green, one was red, and one was yellow. They all had the same parts, but we had one for every combine, and we, we took a picture um, out there that first year. That was pretty exciting to, to see them. But we, we were still struggling big time financially because of the money that we were pouring into molds and, you know, having somebody manufacture some of these parts, you know, and the labor, and taking old gearboxes and cleaning them up, putting new parts in them, putting them on the corn head, you know, and machining them down. So that, uh, that first couple of years was we, we had a lot of man hours. And uh, I remember going in the house. And we'd start at like six o'clock in the morning and then I'd, I'd go in at 12 o'clock and eat something, then lay down on the couch, take about a 30 minute nap, wake up, work through the afternoon. Everybody else would punch out and go home. I'd go in the house, get something to eat, lay down, take a nap. And then I'd wake up, come back out to the shed and be there till 10 o'clock at night trying to get things to, to come together. So what, in what year would it have been, you know, I've been out to your place a couple of times in the old dealership that you took over what you what year would that have been that you moved out there that was 2005 okay so we had done everything prior to that moment um, we had done it in the old farm shop and uh, it, it was kind of challenging because it you know the the heated shop was was with concrete was only 50 50 feet by 50 feet and of course then you have all your 
tools that are in there. And so then we, you know, we didn't, didn't even own a fork truck. We had the old loader tractor. <laughs> so we would use that to stand the corn heads up when we worked on them and then lay them back down, you know, and then we had the combine, it just sat outside all, cause we didn't have room to put it in the shed. They just sat outside all, all summer and we'd come in, pick the heads up and back out and move them around and we'd take them out and then we'd run them, you know, do a, do a 30 minute run in to make sure we didn't have any oil leaks and those kind of things. And, um, so it was kind of a, you know, a one-off build kind of a deal in, in the old shop. And uh, we, we weren't zoned for manufacturing and the, the building just wasn't. And so I, I said, we, we've, we've got to find someplace else. And uh, actually it was, a, it was an old machinery dealership. I used to go up there and buy parts when I was in high school and it had become available. And uh, we, we were so excited. We went up there, you know, and I think it's like 60 by 220 feet. And one end of it has offices, and the other in a little warehouse area. And then it's got a little shop area. And gosh, it had air plumbed in the wall, you know, and it had heat and, and overhead doors that had electric you know, hoist and, and then it, it had bathrooms in it, you know, and I just like, wow, this, this is pretty nice. We don't have to go outside anymore, actually have indoor plumbing, you know. <laughs> so that was, uh, that was an exciting moment when we, we took everything, combines, all the corn heads, all the, all the tools, and we loaded them up and we, we moved seven miles uh, to where our current location is at today. So that was, that was pretty memorable. A major commitment. That we're, oh, yeah. that we're going off the farm. This is there's no turning back. Yeah, this is this is serious stuff. And so I, uh, I again, in order to purchase that place, of course, we you know we were just didn't have any money. We were just nickel and diamond it to to stay together. And uh, the uh, local banker said that well they they have these um, rural economic development loans, and he said they're low interest, and he said they're meant just for people like you. And he said, they're trying to draw new businesses to the county. And he said, you should go apply for one of these low interest loans. And um, we, we needed to borrow a hundred thousand bucks. And uh, so I went up there and I sat down with the lady and she said, well, you need a financial statement. Yeah. And then, you know, what are you going to build? And um, when, you know, repayment, how many years? And then she said, well, we'll need a business plan so that we can take a look at that and then we'll either approve or not approve your, your loan. I said, I, I understand everything. I said, but uh, what's this business plan thing? I said, I, I never had that when I was growing corn and beans and pigs. And she said, well, that's where you're going to tell us what your cost of manufacture is, what you're going to sell it, what's your overhead and how much money you're going to make. And I'm like, oh, that sounds like a good idea. You know, I went home. I said, you know, I just sat there for hours. The paper was blank. I didn't know what to put on it. And we just started piecing it together and they approved the loan and um, it, it was slow, but uh, that was that was where we started. 